that added some tight clearance on these Brembo's for the spare tire. Look at that, millimeters. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you saw my budget Brembo build for this IS300 a while back, I sandblasted everything, I got everything prepped and got the calipers all cleaned up. So what I gotta do today is take them off the spindle to fit them using those overkill engineering brackets that I bought a while back to do this retrofit. So stay tuned. To fit these new Brembo brakes on here, the 17Zs, I'm just actually gonna take the whole spindle off the car and work on the bench and try to fit it on on one side. I'm just doing that just so it makes it easier for me the first time I'm ever doing this. It's totally optional to do it. Uh, most people will probably just leave the spindle and everything on here and try to fit it, but since I'm not in a hurry, I just wanna take everything off. So if you saw one of my recent videos where I changed the ball joint boot, I have to pop the three ball joints on here, take off the ABS line, and then swing the caliper off and the whole spindle comes right out. So I went ahead and just took the spindle off the driver spindle and the passenger side. The passenger side, I decided to unbolt the bracket so I could actually take the rotor off because that thing is heavy as hell right there. I still have to take that rotor off with the bracket anyways. Since I did it over here, you know, it was much lighter to carry that thing than that. So we'll go ahead and take that apart now. So I've got all my parts over here, so I'll go over that after I take this all apart and we start fitting everything together. One of the things we gotta do is we gotta remove these dust shields. This thing's got a huge kind of duct in air for cooling. Trim it down, maybe fold the edges for safety so there's not too many sharp edges and then using them with those bigger rotors over there. So to take this apart, you need a T25 Torx bit. So I've got one of these on this little gear wrench right here. So yeah, you need something that kind of fits in here just because the hub's in the way. To really take it off without pulling the actual hub itself off, you have to cut this, so I'm gonna have to take some snips and just cut that off so I can actually slide it out. Yeah, pulling those shields are kind of big pain. It is a 10 millimeter and it has that T25 hex head. Uh, I try to get the gear wrench in there. It kind of gets tight against the hub. So I just use the regular one and then I finished up with the T25. Over here with this shield, it's a triple stamp shield right around that edge. So it's a little bit hard to cut. If you had a grinder or something, you could probably cut it pretty quick. It took me three different snip uh, cutters and all that and pliers to try to pry those out, but I got them all out. Now that I've got it all vacuumed and everything, I'm gonna spray it down with some super clean foaming to clean up all the brake dust and all that crap that's all around the hub. Because this thing right now, anytime I move it or touch it, it just dusts everywhere and I just wanna get rid of all that, clean up these things, because I'm gonna probably recoat these with new paint uh, just to protect them from all the rust and corrosion anyway. So I'm gonna clean it all up nicely before I start. So here we got the parts. So this is a centric rotor for a GS350 F Sport, the newer like 2012 to 2015, 2016 models. It's a 14 inch rotor. And this is what you need for that 17Z retrofit. So here's the brackets I got from Overkill Engineering. So these two brackets are the front brackets and those are for the rear brackets to get the Brembo's on the rear. I'm gonna do a rear in a different episode just because I wanna keep this short and concise and to the point. So we'll see that in a future episode when I try to fit those on the rear. But as far as the front goes, I decided to buy brand new hardware from Bell Metric. I got all these instructions from Overkill Engineering. He's got a website called 5th Gen Celica or something like that. It requires a login to see all his photos and his posts. You can log into there and he'll give you all the detailed instructions on the bolt sizes and the thread pitch and everything to use. Post down in the description box what I use. I basically followed his instructions. I ordered everything with the correct threads and the correct pitches and the washers and all that. You needed some spacing washers to space the caliper and the bracket. You need some lock washers for your bolts that you're going to use. Then I ended up just picking up these 12.9 strength these are some of the stronger bolts that they actually offer for brakes and all that. So I ordered four for the calipers, and I've ordered four more for the brackets to the spindle itself. So a little quick overview of the 17Z calipers. 
So you gotta make sure that you have the 17 Z's, not the 18 Z's, because the 18 Z's do not fit on the IS300. So the, both of these are 17 ZR and ZL, which is for left and right. And then they also have this additional markings right here, which is the code for this, the part number for this. So it's 28432.06.2. So it's important that you find one, at least with the beginning numbers. I don't know about the end numbers. That might be just different variations. So those are the main markings you need to look for if you're trying to get these for your IS300. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the brackets onto the spindle. So basically the bracket goes between the spindle and the hub. So on the inside here, and then you use these bolts. These are 12 by 1.75. They're a little bit coarser thread, which is the one that Overkill Engineering used to cut his. The ones for the caliper are the OEM size, which is a 1.5 pitch thread. And these are 30 millimeters long. That's the ones that uh, Overkill recommended. You could go 35, but 35 is just a little bit too long, I believe. So you, I just go ahead and put the lock washers on. The way that these go on is the, the skinny side right here goes downward. Go ahead and tighten these down. These, these use a 10 millimeter hex. So you can see the 30 millimeters, they hang over a little bit even when I put the washer on here. So those are on now. The next thing I want to do is put the caliper on. And you probably want to just grab a spare lug that you have laying around and just tighten it down right here to hold this on. So you can see there's plenty of clearance between the rotor and that screw. So yeah, you can have it much longer if you need it to. Overkill had 35 millimeter bolts on there. But and the next thing we want to do is get the caliper now. And then the caliper is going to require a spacer, oh, a couple of spacer washers right there. Ah, this motherfucker spins too much. All right, I'm gonna take the rotor back off and fit it. Here's where we need those washers and two of these bolts. So you're gonna put the bolt in with the, with the locking washers. Two of these guys to space on the actual caliper itself. Two of those guys. So we'll go ahead and tighten these down. These hexes are huge. They're a 14 millimeter. Yeah, there's some clearance spots right here that you gotta notch out according to his instructions. So I'm, just, I'm seeing them now where they're gonna interfere. Okay, so now I see what the, the problem is right now. I can't get it to clock the correct direction because I'm hitting back here right now, right here on this little bracket. So this is where one of the spots you gotta kinda notch and trim so you could clock it and line up the hole perfectly. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm just a bit off on the hole so it doesn't get in here and it might cross thread. I ended up loosening that other bolt on the other end and I kinda clocked it a little bit and I got both bolts in so I could tighten it down. So I got everything to fit except there was a couple areas where they recommend that you not like right into there. And on this particular caliper, I think because I use these hex bolts on the backside, I didn't need to notch them as much right there, but it is resting right against that bracket or that ear of the spindle. So I might shave that down just to give it a little bit of clearance. Since I use this hex nut, you can see that right there, there's barely any clearance on that side. Up here, there's a lot more clearance just because the bracket's in a different position and the caliper's in a different position up here. And you can see the spacer. You need to space the caliper back a little bit off the bracket, so I've got those in there. So everything looks pretty good. I did just throw it onto the 
car over there just to test fit it. Right now, the problem I have is that this backside right here, you can see the little marking, it's actually touching over here with it being so massive. So it's rubbing right onto the caliper right there. So what we have to do on the caliper, so we have to shave a big chunk out right just to clear that ball joint on there. But that shouldn't be so bad. This is not a critical part. Right above this bolt here is where the fluid is. So right down here, we should be fine shaving this down. And then on Overkill's post, so he actually shaved this down pretty rough and a lot of it too. He took a big chunk out to clear some other aftermarket control arms. I think they were Moogs or something like that. So we'll go ahead and start the trimming process on here. So the first thing I got to do is these side ones right here. So I actually marked off the outside lines were a mistake. So the inside, the two little inner marks is about 33 to 35 millimeters. The width of these rotors are 30 millimeters. And then the next thing you got to make sure is from the edge here, right here from the edge into that line, it's about three millimeters. So you want to pull it out about three millimeters. Same with this side. So this side, I marked it a little bit better. So you can see that's how skinny you want it. That's how wide you want it right there to the three millimeters, maybe a little bit closer right there. And then here's that little spot that was rubbing against the ear on the car. So I'm gonna trim that. That's about 15 millimeters wide and it's about 10 millimeters, maybe 11 from this edge right here over. I had a little mark there, so I just kind of used that as a reference point. Like I showed earlier, I think I measured that much right there. I'm gonna take that chunk out right here right below that screw and then fit it on there. So I actually mounted the arm over there onto the car so I can work a little bit better now. Man, talk about millimeters of clearance. Look at this thing. I had to shave that thing all the way down and it's barely clearing that steering knuckle right there. I mean, I'm millimeters. I still have to do a little bit of shaving just to get it good, but it's in there. Millimeters of clearance. There's a little spot in here. So I got that to fit pretty well right there on that ear. I just gotta do a little bit of cleanup and trim there and it should be good. So after this, I can go ahead and trim those edges. So I cleaned up all my grinding with that flak wheel right here. This is a 40 grit flak wheel and that thing did a good job on this. Look at how smooth it looks now. So that's pretty good. I got it pretty smooth all around the edges. No more jagged edges. And once I sandblast it, it's going to get that matte finish and that beaded looking finish like the rest of the caliper. So when I powder coat these, they'll turn out pretty good. That inside one, I also ended up flak disking it right there and it's pretty smooth right there. So I got plenty of clearance right now on this spot for that little ear on the inside. So I'm good with this. This fits perfectly on the car. This is pretty time consuming and I've got dust everywhere. I ended up vacuuming all this stuff up already just to clean off this table. If you haven't noticed, there's gonna be a several night event on doing this uh, fitting onto the car. So I tried all my different tools, the bench grinder, the air grinder right there, and then my regular grinding wheel. I had to go down and get a new disc because my other disc was getting too small so I couldn't get into here. But now that I've got the new disc, I should be able to reach into here and get all this up to here to shave it down. Right now when I test fit it, I'm getting blocked right about here. So I need to go up to maybe another inch up here so I can clear some more material out of here. Same with this side, I gotta clear the material up to about there and then that should be enough to get the clearance for the disc over here, which I've been testing out.
So using that four and a half inch grinding wheel gave me a little bit more reach. I was able to get much more of the material away from here. Uh, I was going a little bit soft on it a little bit, but I just went full send on it just to get as much as I can because you will need to take off a couple millimeters worth of material there and here just to clear the rotor. My plan is to powder coat these and then once I powder coat, I'm gonna add a couple more mils of coating or, or layers on here. So I don't want that to interfere once my powder coat dries on here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up with that flat disc just to smooth all this stuff out and then kind of like this right here where it's really smooth. And after that, I'm gonna probably do the other side off camera and we'll see how both look after that. So we've got this baby all cleaned up with the flak disc and you can see it's pretty much smoothed out. I couldn't get really in there just because of the, the reach of this four or four and a half inch flak disc that I have. If I had a better flak disc, I could probably get in there more, but I'm gonna go over those with a sandblaster to try to smooth it out much better before I powder coat this, all these areas down here. So I'm pretty happy with how this came out and we're pretty good here on the fitment of everything. So I'm gonna go test fit this on the car, make sure everything clears and we'll see how this looks. So we got this baby mounted on, everything is clear. The clearances and everything are perfect as far as the rotor goes. We got that. This thing spins freely, nothing's rubbing, so I'm right spot on where I need to be with this. So you can see in the photo that it's really tight on the clearances and everything, but it does spin freely, it doesn't touch, so this is perfectly what I need for this to work, and we're good with this side, so I'm gonna go and finish up the other side off camera. And I that is some tight clearance on these Brembo's. The spare tire, look at that, millimeters. Yeah, look at that clearance on these 19 inch F Sport GS350 wheels. That is just like millimeters, just like the spare tires, but it clears enough to spin freely, so that's good. This is stock 2IS 2006 to 2008 wheel, the 18 inch version, and you got this little lip right here. It's probably like a three millimeter drop on the drop center that causes it to rub these calipers. It rubs the GS F Sport calipers also, so it's a very tight clearance. I had to use a 30 millimeter on my 2IS to clear that F Sport caliper, but even on here with these 17Zs, yeah, it's not gonna work. I mean, right now I have the 20 millimeter spacer on it and it still rubs that little spot, barely like a millimeter or two of clearance. So you see I got it back into there. I mounted it right now just to test fit it, but everything clears the rotor, it clears the caliper. So it's pretty good as far as the dust shield goes. And the reason why I'm putting the dust shield because you can see how it angles out right there. It actually matches up with the duct underneath the car here and it channels air into the rotor and the caliper for cooling. So I kind of wanted to keep that. Plus, I didn't want to have it bare back here where dust and crap from the brakes would get everywhere. So at least this acts as a small dust shield. It doesn't fully cover the rotor, but it's better than having nothing back there right now. So I've got that. I'm going to hit that with some paint just to get it nice and clean. And I'm going to mount it back onto the car. Oh yeah, look at that fitment on these wheels with that, with that huge Brembo caliper. So what I had to do on these wheels is I initially tested it with a 30 millimeter spacer I had. The one I needed for my 2IS to fit my stock wheels in case I ever had to put my stock wheels on my 2IS. So I bought a 30 millimeter spacer for that. I tested it out and I measured it. This setup needed a 20 millimeter. So I ordered a 20 millimeter forged spacer on Amazon. Hopefully these things hold up. I mean, they were forged, which a little bit better than those, I guess. Those weren't forged. Yeah, I think these were like 30 something, 40 bucks I got on Amazon, but they fit perfectly. I mean, my, my measurement was spot on. I mean, I have like two millimeters of clearance like I expected. Perfect spins, nothing rubs. That looks pretty dang nice there. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this video on fitting these Brimbo 17Z calipers onto my IS300. As you can see, it's a lot of tedious work as far as shaving it down, fitting it on the car. I was trying to 
use the tools I had, but if you had access to more tools that get into those crevices and try to shave it down better, it'll actually take you a lot quicker than it did to me. And I did take a lot of time just kind of, you know, putting it on the car, taking it off, trying to fit it. And the freaking whole garage is full of dust right now. It's all full of aluminum dust. At first I wasn't wearing a mask, but obviously I put on a mask afterwards just to make sure I wasn't breathing in any of that aluminum dust that I was shaving off of here. But overall, not bad for $80 calipers. If you didn't have this much time to tinker around and do what I do, I would definitely recommend just doing ISF calipers on here, the six pot ISF calipers, which were on sale for like 300 bucks each a couple weeks ago with that 20% off sale, but I think that's over now. Using that with a $200, 350 fee caliper brackets to fit it on this car would have been a lot easier for me to do that than spending days messing with this, but obviously I like doing this stuff, so it was second nature trying to just you know, fit it onto the car, and it's more the accomplishment of trying to put those calipers on this car. If you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel already, subscribe to your channel. On a future episode, I'm going to do the rear, so I still have to fit those onto the rears. They're not that bad as far as fitting it on the rears. It's just minor shaving. It's not like the front. The front was like full send, uh, you know, grinding and shaving and all that to fit, but the rear is just minor trim to fit onto there. And then once I do that and get all that ready, I'm waiting for my powder coat gun. I'm going to go ahead and powder coat these. I haven't chosen a color or anything yet to do, but I'm thinking more of like a blue uh, or or maybe a you know a like a candy red or something. I haven't made up my mind yet. Since I just recently did the red stitching on my steering wheel, I feel like I want to do red. But I'll make that final decision once I start looking at some colors on there. But other than that, once I powder coat them and then I'm gonna have to rebuild them. I got a whole rebuild kit to do all the seals on them on the front and the rear. So I've got to do that. Yeah, it's gonna be several more episodes of me working on these calipers before they're 100% for the car. But anyways, thanks for uh, tuning in all the way to the end, and I'll talk to you guys next time.